Okay, the probability review on binomial distribution. So the binomial has two possible outcomes, success and failure. Each trial is independent, but the, and the probabilities cannot change. That's exactly the way the geometric was, so that's a Bernoulli. But the difference is the number of trials is predetermined or fixed. When we were working with the geometric, we continued until the first success. With the binomial, we are going to have a fixed number of attempts or trials, all right? We may have zero successes, where as with the geometric, you're continuing until the first. The formula for the binomial is n choose x, n is the number of trials, x is the number of successes, p is the probability of success. Our expected value for a binomial, extremely important, is in p, and this is our standard deviation. Okay, once again, make sure you've memorized this because you're going to use it so much. All right, so binomials, how are they usually phrased? Um, what is the probability of a certain number of successes in a given number of trials? If we are looking for a specific number of successes, that's going to be a PDF. All right, so this will be a singular value. What's the probability at least some number? And I want to add along to at least, I want to say more than, so at least and more than are going to be one minus a binomial CDF. And since it can be multiple values, that makes it a CDF. And please remember, a CDF is just a sum of all this, the PDFs. What's the probability of no more than? Again, we have a possibility of multiple values, but because it's no more than, or less than, no more or less than is going to be a CDF. And we'll skip the last one because it's very unlikely. So what's the probability of a basketball player who makes 82% of the shot, shots shoots 25 times and misses six? So if I'm setting up my work, I'm gonna go, all right, trials is 25. What we're interested in are the misses, all right? The probability of a miss is 0.18. And then this is 0.82, one minus that. And 25 minus six is 19. So that's work shown. So this is, because it has to be a specific number of trials is a binome PDF trials. And this time is 25. Our probability is 0.18 and we needed six. So let's go try that out real quickly. S second bars, binomial, PDF, trials is 25, P is 0.18, and our X value is six. This is trials probability X, and we end up getting 0.1387. All right, what's the probability of who makes 82% of the shots, shoots 25 times and misses no more than six? So whenever they do this, and I should have done this on a previous one, I should have made a, a listing. Well, I can miss zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 25. Well, in this particular case, I wanna miss no more than six. So I can miss zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six. I circled more than one value, so this makes it a CDF. And I have a fixed number of trials 25 times. So this makes this a binomial because I'm not shooting until the first. Um, I miss, um, since I'm not shooting until I miss, um, I'm shooting 25 times regardless. And then we're going to count the number of mixes. So this makes this a binomial. CDF, and I'm going to show my work this way because what I plug in the calculator and the way I show my work are two different things. So I'm going to go 25 choose zero. The probability of the miss was 0.18. Probability, so this is 0.18 times to the zero power, 0.82, and this will be to the 25th power. Now, remember a CDF is a sum of all the PDFs. 
I'm not going to write all those down. I'm just going to do the first one, the lowest one, and the highest one. And I'm going to write 25 to 6. 0.18 to the sixth power, 0.82, 25 minus six is 19. All right, so we have a binome CDF, because this is what I'm going to be putting in the calculator. Trials, 25, probability, 0.18, and our X value is six. So this is my trials, this is my probability, this is my X. Second VARS, binomial, CDF, trials, 25, probability, 0.18, X value, 6, equals 0.8512. This part right here is the way you show your work, okay? This is what you're actually running in the calculator. All right, moving on to the next problem. What is the probability of a basketball player who makes 82% shots, choose 25s, and misses at least six? So once again, we can miss zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 25. So they're shooting 25 times, and it's possible he misses all, all 25. So at least six means six or more. All right. So this is the way I'm going to show my work. Remember, uh, we have multiple values, so we know this is going to be a CDF. So this is binome CDF. But the way we're going to show our work is in, um, taking the smallest one of interest, which is six. So 25 to six, 0.18 to the sixth power times 0.82, 25 minus six is 19 plus, and then we're going to go to the largest because we're always going to do the smallest minus the largest plus 25 choose 25.18 to the 25th, 0.82 to the zero power. Well, technically I need to do the PDF of six, seven, eight, and that take a very long time. The easiest thing to do is once again, the CDF. So, but I didn't circle zero. If I don't circle zero, I'm doing a one minus. So I'm doing one minus, and anytime they say the word at least, it's a one minus situation. One minus the binomial CDF trials, 25, P, 0.18. Now the tricky part is we always subtract out what we don't want. Well, I want six, but I don't want five. So this is what I'm going to show. So that would be what I'm going to plug into the calculator. So one minus second VARS binomial CDF. And I need to change that X value to a five. And I end up getting 0.2875. So there's my answer. Once again, this is my work shown. This is what I'm plugging into the calculator, and that's my answer. Um, what is the probability that a basketball player who makes 82% shots shoots 25s and misses between six and 10 shots inclusive? All right. So this is probably not going to occur, but we'll show it anyway. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, dot, 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 all the way to 25. This is what we want to have happen. Well, we know for fact that it's going to be a binomial because we're shooting a specific number of trials. And um, when, when you do this, you always take the 
uh, first off, for work shown, it's basically going to be 25, lowest value is 6, 25 choose 6, 0.18 to the 6th power, 0.82 to the 19th, plus dot, 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 plus the highest thing I want is 25 choose 10. And 25 minus 10 is 15. That's work shown. Where it gets a little tricky is when we actually have to calculate this in the calculator. Because the calculator does this in two, we're gonna have to do this in two steps. First off, it's gonna be the binome of the highest value we want. So that's gonna be, still our trials are 25. Our probability is still 0.18. But the highest value I want, my x value, is going to be 10. So this is trials, probability, x value. So that's going to be my first part. Then I'm going to have to come back and do a 1 minus the binome CDF. And I'm going to subtract out what I don't want. So this took what I did when I did the 10 is it essentially did a PDF of zero, 01 included all of this. But then I need to come back and subtract out what I don't want. And what I don't want is everything less than six. Unlikely that this is going to show up on a test, but here it is. The um, highest value I don't want is a five. So this is trials probability X. And that's the way you plug this in the calculator. So let's do this. So second bars, binomial, CDF. And I just need to change my X value to 10. Minus second bars, binomial, CDF. Now I need to change my X value to what I didn't want and the highest value I didn't want was a five. And I end up getting 0 0.2851. Again, very unlikely that that would show up. But if it did, the main part is to show your work, which would be the lowest, um, lowest one that you wanted all the way to the highest one you wanted, all right? Um, according to a recent survey, 31% of the residents of a certain store, a certain state who are age 25 years or older have a bachelor's degree, a random sample of 50 uh, residents of the state age 25 will be selected. Let the random variable B represent the number of samples other than the sample who have a, a bachelor's degree. What is the probability that B will equal 40? All right, so. Um, we're going to take a random sample of 50. So we have a specific number. We have a specific percentage. This is going to be a binomial PDF. And if I was making a list, I'd go, well, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 39, 40, 41, dot, 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 all the way to 50. And they want specifically equal to 40. I'm supposed to be circling a 40. All right. So we're going to have 50 choose 40. This is going to be a small number, 0.31 to the 40th. This is going to be 0.69 to the 10th. The way we're going to plug this in a calculator is a binom singular value. Singular value is a PDF. Trials in this case is 50, probability 0.31, and we needed 40 of them. Probability, excuse me, trials, probability X. So here we go. Second bars, binomial, PDF, trials, 50, probability 0.31, X value. 40. 
and almost zero. And by the way, please, again, be careful. If you get the fact that I had a one out here, I can't have a one. So I need to look to see how many zeros. And it's like, oh, I got more than four. Approximately zero. According to a recent survey, 81% of adults in a certain state have graduated from high school. Uh, if, if, if 15 adults from a state are selected, what's the probability that five of them have not graduated from high school? So, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot, 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 all the way to 15. But they wanted exactly five. Well, the probability of graduation equals 0.81. So the probability of not graduating, which is what we're interested in, is 1 minus 0.81 or 0.19. Because we're looking for a singular value, this is going to be a binomial PDF because we have a specific number of trials. The specific number of trials says, oh, it's binomial. And it's a singular value, so it's a PDF. And to show my work, we're gonna have 15 is my trials, 0.19 to the fifth power, 0.81, 15 minus five is 10. So there's my work shown, but what I'm gonna plug in the calculator is binomial PDF, trials is 15, probability 0.19, X value five, trials probability X. Second VARS, binomial PDF, trials is 15, 0.19, X is five. And we get 0 0.0904. Once again, this is a workshop. Suppose we have a random variable X, uh, where for the values X equals zero through 12, the associated probabilities are this. What is the mean? So they're asking for the expected value. What is the formula for expected value for binomial? Well, it's N times P. Well, N happens to be 12. And right here is the probability of success, which is 0.34. So 12 times 0.34. And we end up 4.08. So the expected value or the mean is 4.08. Suppose we have a binomial random variable where the probability of exactly four successes is this. What is the mean? Well, n is the n is the number of trials. Well, they didn't give us this, but we know that the sum of the exponents equals n. So n equals 4 plus 7. So n equals 11. And the expected value of a binomial is n, is n times p. I'm having trouble writing that. Expected value equals np. Well, they didn't give me P directly, but they gave me Q. So in this case, we already said that N was 11 equals 11 times 1 minus 0.37. Because 1 minus 0.37 would give me P. So in this case, 11 times 0.63 equals 6.93. According to one poll, 12% of the public favor legalizing all drugs in a simple random sample of six people, what is the probability that at least one? So we're gonna go zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 all the way to six. This satisfies. That's at least one, that's at least two, that's at least three, that's at least four. So for work shown, we're gonna do this. Six, choose one. 
our probability is 0.12 to the first, one minus that, 0.88, six minus one is five, plus dot, 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 plus six, two, six, 0.12 to the six, 0.88, six minus six is zero. All right, now, This was an at least problem. So we can either sum up all the PDFs individually, or we can make this, since we have multiple values, we can do a one minus the binome CDF, trials is still six, probability is still 0.12, but we subtract out the highest value we don't want, which is zero. So trials, probability, x. So here we go. One minus second VARS, binomial, CDF, trials, six, probability, 0.12, x value, zero, equals 0.535. All right. It is estimated 30% of all cars parked in a metered lot outside received tickets for meter violation in a random sample of five cars was a probability that at least one. Again, we have an at least. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five cars. At least one means anything greater than one. So once again, we start with the lowest, five choose one. Oops, not a fraction line, five choose one. Scratch that out, five, choose one. And 0.3 to the first, five minus one is four, plus dot, 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 plus, five, choose five. 0.3 to the fifth, 0.7, five minus five is zero. That's what's shown. And everyone's happy with that, because. Now we have multiple values, so this makes it a CDF. So one minus the binome CDF trials is five, probability is 0.3. And we're subtracting out the largest value we don't want. Well, we wanted one, two, three, four, five, so the largest value we don't want is zero. And remember, we're always subtracting out when we're doing an at least problem or an at most problem. So in this case, one minus second VARS, binomial, CDF, trials in this case were five, probability 0.3, X value zero, there it is. And we end up getting 0.8319. Once again, this is your work shown, extremely important. Last problem, an inspection procedure at a manufacturing plant involves picking three items at random and then accepting the whole lot if at least two of the three items are in perfect condition. In reality, 84% are perfect. What's the probability the lot will be accepted? All right, so we're gonna pick three items at random. So we have a, a specific number of trials. Our trials happen to be three. three. And we have a probability of 0.84 that it's perfect. So, and I said, if in reality, um, that two of the three. So if, the, if we have two out of three, um, then we're good to go. So here's the way I'm gonna show my work. Trials is three, but if I have two successes, that's good. And that's 0.84 squared, 0.16, three minus two is one, plus three choose three, 0.84 cubed, 0.16, three minus three is zero. So essentially I can sum up two PDFs but I'm going to do it as a CDF because I have multiple values. So one minus the binome 
CDF trials are three, probability is 0.84 trials, probability. In my X value, I'm subtracting out the highest value I don't want, which is one. We want two and three, so the one I don't want is one. So in this case, one minus second bars binomial CDF trials are three probability 0.84 x value one and we get 0.9314 equals 0.9313 this right here is your workshop all right Okay, thank you for watching the video.